Hey, this is Mr. Aiden. Com. And this is Final Topics of Equilibrium. Let's get to it. Let's start off with graphs of concentration. And you've seen a lot of these things in Final Topics before, but we're going to do graphs of concentration first. Let's, let's say I start with about 4 moles of N2 gas. Let's say I start with about 3 moles of H2 gas. And let's, start, let's say I start off with 0 products, 0 NH3. What's going to happen here is as the N2 starts to get used, I'm only going to use one mole of the N2 and you can see the rate is very fast and it's decreasing and then it levels off. The H2, I'm going to use three moles of the H2 because there's a one to three ratio and you can see that guy of course gets fast and then levels off as well. But look at the NH3. The NH3 starts at zero and he goes up the two and this is your ice chart this is your initial change equilibrium and how do I know I'm at equilibrium what time am I at equilibrium I'm at time E at equilibrium and, and how do I know I'm at equilibrium is when the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction and you can see why I type everything and don't write anything is my handwriting is awful but the, we know we're at equilibrium is when the rates are equal the rates of the forward reaction and the rates of the backwards reaction and you can tell your molar ratios from this graph you can also tell when things happen and you can see how it let's say I put in more N2 let's say my N2 which is the red I put more in there guess what's gonna happen the N2's still gonna come down by one mole Okay, whereas the NH3 will continue to go up by two moles. Okay, and so anytime you put some in, it's you're going to have some shift happen in order to compensate for that change. Uh, let's talk about manipulating K, manipulating the rate constant. And there's two different ways we can manipulate the rate constant. One is is if we flip our reaction. This is going to be a lot like Hess's law. When we flip our reaction, let's say we flip our reaction, and that means we have 2NH3, and we have N2, and we have 3H2. What happens to the KC? The new K, the new K is going to be 1 over the KC, the inverse. Why? Because think of the equilibrium expression. We always put the products on top. I'll write the equilibrium equilibrium expression down here. We have the NH3 squared over the N2 times the H2 to the third power. And so if we flip the reaction, it inverses or flips this equilibrium reaction. And that's why it's going to be the inverse or 1 over. We call that in math class the reciprocal. We could also multiply or divide just like in Hess's law. Let's say we multiply. Let's say we multiply. We're not going to flip here. We're going to come back to the regular equation. We have 2N2 plus 6H2 in equilibrium with 4NH3. What happens in an equilibrium reaction when we double something? That Remember that exponent that coefficient goes in as an exponent, so the new K, because we doubled it, would be the old KC, and we would square that guy. And so there's two things we can do. We can flip or we can multiply or divide. And let's do both of those together. This is kind of like a Hess's Law problem. We have the top two reactions. We've been given KCs, and we're going to try to find our new KC for the bottom reaction. And so if you can see, just like in Hess's Law, you, you're going to take a look at one thing. Let's take a look at the F minus. The F minus is right there. And so I need to double it, don't I? Because I have one F minus, I want two F minus, and so what am I going to do to this KC? I'm going to square that KC, won't I? All right. Let's take a look at the second reaction. The second reaction, we have our C2 O4 negative 2. Our C2 O4 negative 2 is on the left-hand side, so we're going to have to flip that reaction. So what do I do to this KC? I'm going to do one over KC. And I'm going to call that KC1, and I'm going to call this KC2. And so what did I do to KC1? I squared it. What did I do to KC2? I flipped it. And when I want to combine these two equations together, I'm not going to add them like in Hess's Law. I'm going to multiply them. So that means I'm going to have KC1, which I squared. I'm going to multiply by my 1 over KC2, and that gives me my new KC for that reaction. Okay, and so that is called manipulating K. Let's go to what's called Q problems. Q stands for quotient. And so I'm going to think of my equilibrium expression. Again, I have 
NH3 squared, I have N2, and I have H2 cubed. You can see they've given me K. We are going to um, plug in our numbers here. So we're going to plug in 2 molar up top because they gave me 2 molar. I'm going to plug in 2 molar down bottom and 2 molar to the third power. And so that gives me 4 on the top. 2 molar cubed is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. And so that gives me 1 fourth or 0.25. Okay. Can you see how this, what they call our Q, okay, what we have calculated, our quotient of 0.25, it is less than my K. If it's less than the K, what's going to happen here is we're going to have to shift to the right in order to compensate for that reaction. I'm going to have to start to make more NH3 to give me a bigger number. And once the Q is equal to the K, that is when we are at equilibrium. That is when we're at equilibrium. And so we, we do a lot of Q problems with KSP problems. And let's give this KSP problem. Let's do my equilibrium expression. I have AG plus squared. I have SO4 minus 2. And can you see how they gave me both values? They gave me this. This guy was 0 0.05 molar. This guy is 0 0.05 molar, but you can see how when I add 100 mils and 100 mils, it is now in a 200 mil solution. So because I doubled the volume, it halves the molarity. It halves the molarity. It goes from 0.5 to 0.25. This guy goes from 0.5 to 0.25. And when I take 0.25 squared times 0.25, I end up getting a quotient of 0.016. Okay, which is much greater than 9.4 times 10 to the negative 6. It's much greater than 0.00000094. Okay, and so if it's greater. Look where the gator is chomping. He's chomping this way. It means it's going to shift it this way. It means I'm going to make a solid. I'm going to make a precipitate because, take a look, I have enough concentration in order to overcome that K, and it will precipitate. If it is less than the K, we will, of course, get a dissolved ions. Okay. Let's take a look at Le Chatelier's principle. Um, and Le Chatelier's principle comes from a French dude named Le Chatelier, not Napoleon, not the guy from Monty Python's, not that guy up in the upper right hand corner. Le Chatelier's principle says that if you change something at equilibrium, it's going to shift it to compensate for it. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is adding concentration. Let's say we add concentration of my reactants. Where is it going to shift? It will shift to the right in order to compensate. It'll start to make more products. Of course, if you put in more reactants, you're going to make more products. If you put in more products, if you add concentration on this side, if you put in more products, it's going to shift it to the left in order to compensate for that. We'll start making more reactants, which means if we remove concentration from the reactants, it's going to shift it to the left. It'll shift it towards the reactants in order to bring it back to equilibrium. That's the first one is adding concentration. Next one is adding heat or temperature. Now take a look at this this delta H, our enthalpy number. It's negative, which means we're exothermic, which means our heat, our delta H, is a product, which means if we add more heat, if we add more temperature, it's going to shift it away from that, and it will shift it to the left in order to compensate for that change. The next thing is is uh, reducing the volume of the container. So if we reduce the volume, okay, if we reduce the volume of the container, it's always going to shift to the least number of moles, okay? If we have a big, big, big container, okay, it's gonna be, it's gonna stay more of N2 and 3H2. But if we have a smaller container, it's gonna start shifting to the 2 NH3. It's gonna shift, of course, to the left. Which means if we have a bigger container, if we increase the volume of the container, it would shift it to the left, of course. Um, the last th couple things is adding a solid. If we add a solid, nothing happens. Nothing happens. Why does nothing happen? Because solids are not in our equilibrium expression. It doesn't matter. Let's say we add an inert gas. An inert gas means something that doesn't react, something like a noble gas, something like helium or neon or argon. If we put in some of these inert gases, nothing happens. Why? Because they don't react with anything. The next thing is adding a catalyst. What does a catalyst do to my reaction? Nothing. 
because it will increase the rate of the forward reaction, but guess what? It will also increase the rate of the reverse reaction, and it's still going to be at equilibrium. And so adding a callus does nothing, honey. And the last thing is adding volumes of water to KSP problems. If you add volume of water to KSP problems, nothing happens. And we've investigated that in class, is that adding volumes of water to KSP problems, nothing happens. It's still at equilibrium. It's not going to change the X. It's not going to change the concentration. That is final topics at equilibrium. I got review sheets online, and go there if you need that. And I will catch you guys later.